The Russian military has reportedly been repelling Ukrainian forces in Russia's Kursk region. Russian jets have pummeled Ukrainian hardware and manpower reserves in 16 settlements in the Sumy region in Ukraine. In total, Ukraine has reportedly lost over 10,000 servicemen since fighting began in the region. These are figures and, of course, these are reports which are coming from the Russian Defense Ministry. Vladimir Putin said that the liberation of Donbass is Russia's priority goal and that Ukraine has failed completely in countering Russia. Now, is this the end of the Ukrainian resistance? To discuss this on Game Plan with me is Dr. Walker Stanzel, former German ambassador, senior distinguished fellow at SWP, German Institute for International and Security Affairs. Ambassador Stanzel, thank you so much for joining us at this short notice. Thank you so much for joining thank me you. on Game Plan. Sir, Putin said the Russian armed forces have stabilized the situation as they have been gradually squeezing the enemy out in border areas, quote unquote. Is this the end of the Ukrainian resistance? What are your thoughts on these statements coming in from the Russian side? Well, the end of uh, Ukrainian resistance would be uh, overstating things. But what we, uh, I think, can say is that uh, the war is entering a new stage. And uh, two elements uh, is, uh, us, I think, to be observed. One is uh, what's happening in uh, Kursk. And, uh, well, Kiev says they have not lost uh, even one single meter there. Uh, they are holding uh, the area that they have already conquered. Uh, at the same time, you see that Putin does at least not seem interested in pushing the Ukrainians out of Kursk, which would mean a lot of manpower, a lot of armament uh, to be wasted uh, in that area, while he is really uh, aiming in the southeast of Ukraine, like uh, Pokrovsk. Uh, where he has not made headway uh, in the past few days, and other areas like uh, Kasevyar also, where he has not moved ahead, but is uh, amassing troops and armament in order to push there. This, I think, is the Russian objective. Now, uh, today, uh, as you know, the Ukrainian contact group is uh, meeting in uh, Rammstein in uh, Germany, and I think at the end of the day, we will know better in which way uh, the supporters of Ukraine will react to the situation that we have. Uh, Ambassador Stanzel, when you assess matters at this juncture, do you feel Russia gains more by keeping Ukrainian forces divided between Ukrainian land and the forces which entered and they invaded Russia in the Kursk region? Because that way that force is divided by not pushing them back out, as you mentioned earlier, because today is 6th September, it's been nearly a month since they entered Russia. Till now, a lot of them are still very much there, as Ukraine pretty much points out, that they've not lost even a meter of land over there. Does Russia gain more from keeping them inside Kursk and having them divided inside Ukraine as Russia tries to gain more ground in Ukraine? Being an amateur in these things, I still think uh, that this is really the case. Uh, the offensive in Kursk had the objective to uh, make the Russians draw some of their um, troops from the southeast of Ukraine, that's around Pogrovsk and Chasifyar, uh, to help the uh, Russian um, uh, army in uh, Kursk. That Russia has not done, because, as I said, uh, Putin seems uh, to favor to push ahead in the southeast and maybe conquer strategically important areas of Ukraine there. So if Ukraine is uh, holding the situation as it is in Kursk and doesn't make headway there, it is also not able to use the manpower from there to help defend Progrovs in the southeast. And that, of course, is to the advantage of uh, Russia. Uh, Ambassador Stanzel, the figures that are coming out from the Russian side is that Ukraine has lost some 10,000 servicemen since fighting began. And of course, this is since fighting, since hostilities began in the Kursk region. And of course, Russia has been making, uh, has been causing a lot of destruction in the Sumi region as well. Do you feel Ukraine can recover at this juncture, even if it is armed with more Western weapons, with longer range Western weapons, perhaps? Well, first, um, I think we can discount uh, the uh, figures we get from Russia. All right. But what we can see is, of course, the effect of uh, uh, every night's attacks of uh, important cities, Kiev, Kharkiv, uh, Lviv, in Ukraine, with uh, a 
great number of dead among the civilian population. And this, of course, uh, drains the will of uh, resistance in Ukraine. I think that is uh, pretty obvious. So if Ukraine and now the Ukrainian contact group thinks about what to do in the future, I think this is a situation they will want to change in the, uh, at the very first place. Uh, taking care of Pogrovs, defending Pogrovs has been relatively successful so far, and I think Ukraine will continue to do that. But how to counter the Russian offensive in the air every night in great numbers, uh, in so great numbers that you may have heard, uh, Bela Russia, which is on the side of Russia, has downed uh, two Russian drones last night because there was a mistake, so many drones, drones being in the air. Something has to be done there. And this, I think, is the major uh, point uh, that uh, the Ukrainian contact group uh, will discuss today. Ambassador, now this is a dilemma or this is a confusion which anybody reading different sources of media will have. If you read reports which are coming out from the West, it seems Ukraine's incursion into Kursk has been successful. If you read those same reports from the Russian side, as you mentioned, you said you can discount the figures that Russia is reporting. Given that same logic, one can perhaps discount the figures that Ukraine is reporting as well from the ground. Sitting uh, in any other part of the world, if one wants to gauge exactly what is the right way to gauge what is happening or which side the war is tilting, what would be the right way or right indicators to gauge that? Well, indicators is uh, difficult, but uh, uh, looking at reports uh, from uh, uh, professional observers of the situation will help. But still, I think uh, we have to regard every news we get be they from Kiev or be they from Moscow, mm. with a grain of salt or with some skepticism. What we need to think about more, I think, is if now the war enters a new stage, as I said before, which, which direction will it take? And you have mentioned before, if uh, the supporters of Ukraine deliver more arms, newer arms, mm. uh, arms uh, to defend the air in, at night, that may be a game changer it also may not be sufficient. But uh, what we know is that so far, the Western supporters of Ukraine have stalled uh, taking a decision on providing more arms to Ukraine. Now the situation as it is, uh, with questions that you have already asked, uh, is not uh, the will of resistance in Ukraine weakening? Uh, something has to be done. And to deliver arms is more arms and different kinds of arms certainly would be a way. You have heard that uh, United Kingdom has already decided uh, to uh, give uh, 100 some uh, million euro worth of um, uh, missiles to Ukraine as soon as possible. Romania today has uh, announced uh, to do the same kind of thing. I don't know to which amount uh, that will be, but at least it shows that uh, the supporters of Ukraine are helping. And the United States will probably today announce how much they will make available. Then the question is, will Ukraine be permitted to use these uh, arms in a way that they want, which is hitting targets far inside of Russia? That is the risk that the supporters of Russia, uh, of uh, Ukraine, have been trying to avoid so far. Why? Because if you hit targets far inside Russia, the danger is that the strategic balance between NATO, not Ukraine, but NATO and Russia is changing uh, to the disadvantage of Russia. And that would be a totally different game. Uh, and that would be very dangerous. That is why the supporters, the Western supporters, NATO supporters of Ukraine have been trying to avoid that. But how far can they go, go in this situation where Ukraine is visibly weakened? And that definitely is the golden question at this point. Even if Ukraine is armed with those highly sophisticated, long-range weapons that they will get from the West, will they be permitted to use them to target deep inside Russia? And if they do that, then what kind of a face will Russia come back with in terms of you know, what kind of balance, how will the balance be tipping in this war? Because now it won't be, it'll be a direct NATO versus Russia if NATO weapons are used deep inside Russia. We very well know, given precedent, how Russia's saber-rattling, nuclear saber-rattling comes into play almost instantly. 
and that can definitely change the face of the war completely. So, of course, we are at a very, very sensitive point at this point, and we'll only need to wait and watch what happens next if Ukraine is indeed permitted to do something that the West has been trying to shirk off since a very long time now. Thank you so much for joining us, uh, sir. That was, okay. uh, that was Dr. Volker Stanzel, former German ambassador, senior distinguished fellow at SWP, joining me on Game Plan. Pleasure speaking with you. Thank you.